Okay, I'd like to go over the topic of ignition timing, especially in relation to uh, small engines. This is my uh, Jaguar CDI, which actually is not officially the Jaguar CDI now because of a uh, trademark, uh, what do you call it? It's not a dispute. Uh, of course, there's, there's the Jaguar car company, so I can't use that name. So it's I, I can only call it the Performance CDI. So um, this is the timing graph. I made my own CDI tester to to be able to uh, determine exactly what the timing curve of different CDI's is. And this is the Groovy CDI that I tested. This blue is the Jaguar CDI and the and for one of the two different adjustments four different graphs which mostly affects the high RPM. The other adjustment affects the height of this portion right here, this portion. So uh, why does it matter? It matters because, where is that, there it is. This is crankshaft degrees. 180 degrees to be about right here, which is bottom dead center. Zero is top dead center. And then again, it goes on back on to bottom dead center. This vertical uh, plane is um, pressure in PSI. So this shows the cylinder pressure um, given given um, giving an ignition timing of um, 34 degrees, 41 degrees, and 49 degrees before top dead center. And I don't know which engine they did this test on, but uh, the specifics of when it happens is not important. What what I want to show to you is that the ignition uh, event happens uh, a, a fair amount of time before top dead center. Why? Because it's not an instant explosion. The the gas the fuel oil mixture is is burning and and. As it expands away from the spark plug, they call that the flame front, which is the, the outer boundary of, of the, the burning. And it takes time for that to happen. So when you have an ignition here, it's going to peak somewhere over here past top dead center, which is what you want to happen. You want it to happen past top dead center. What happens if it happens before top dead center? You're fighting against it. It's not it's not helping it's not pressure being used to move the piston down everything after top dead center is going to be moving the piston down the piston is going up before top dead center so it it would actually before if if that peak pressure happens before top dead center you're actually uh, reducing power you're slowing yourself down it's like a brake this particular chart is showing the difference between compression ratios of 6 to 1, 5 to 1, and 4 to 1. Even though the 4 to 1 uh, engine had ignition timing uh, 15 degrees earlier than the 6 to 1, you can still see its pressure peak happened maybe 10 degrees later than the 6 to 1 which means it, it needed even more advance. So the, the timing is dependent upon the compression ratio. Uh, it also depends upon how well the fuel mixture is mixed. A cheap carburetor like what comes on the Groovy engine uh, does a crappier job of mixing the, uh, the fuel and the air, which means it's going to take longer to burn, which means it needs more advance. So, so for 
So for the stock groovy engine, the normal CDI is is not that bad. It's not great, but ideally it should be like planing out here and maybe come down a little bit because 6,000 RPM is like the peak for a stock engine. This CDI is, is you can tell by the curve it's made for a four stroke because a two stroke a CDI that's made for a two stroke goes down in our in timing. And by down I mean closer to TDC. This is TDC. This is before TDC. So in effect at 3000 RPM the timing happens at like 22 degrees before top dead center. The abbreviation is right here. So most good two-stroke CDIs are somewhere around 10 degrees before top dead center at 10,000 RPM. 10,000 is over here, so it'd be like right over here. Okay. Um, as you move as you move this up with the other settings too, all these four will move up also. So uh, it, it's it's centered around a typical average for what's expected at higher RPM. Um, unfortunately, on such a small engine, even if if you have a bad um, a bad ignition timing or incorrect ignition timing, there's not going to be a big difference in power. So I can't. Well, unless you, unless you port it for higher RPM. I did for mine. Mine revved up to like 9,500 RPM. So I used all of this curve. If you don't port yours at all, you're only going to use it up to right here. So uh, for, for most people, I would say the biggest difference in having a correct, correctly timed CDI is less engine heat and uh, drastically more bearing life at least twice the bearing life because what happens when you when when the timing happens too advanced which is what happens with the stock CDI at, at the higher RPM let's say four to six thousand RPM the peak pressure is going to be happening before or right around TDC, but probably before. And what that does is it causes even more pressure. And all that pressure is pushing against or onto the uh, conrod bearings, both the, the top and the bottom conrod bearings. And those will wear out pretty fast. A typical conrod bearing in a groovy engine does not last very long. And it's because of the, the, the CDI. So for most people, I would say get a good CDI for reliability's sake. Um, as far as as far as uh, as far as power, it 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 would make. I could say yeah, it, it gives you more power if you ported it for higher RPM. Because at higher RPM, you really need that retard. By retard, I mean going down. Because this, this is more advanced, this is more retarded. So this is more retarded, in, relatively speaking, to, to right here. Um, if, if you port your engine and you've got the stock CDI, you'll probably find that it will not reach its potential. You may have ported it for 9,000, it may only go up to 7,000. And, and stopping at 7,000 means that coming up to 7,000, you, you're, you're getting weaker and weaker and weaker in power. So for a ported engine, yes, a good CDI like mine will make a difference in power at the high RPM. Um, I don't know if there's anything else. Uh, Using a motorcycle high voltage coil also uh, increases the spark strength. And there, I did find a uh, 
Let me see if I got a link to that. I did find a uh, a research paper that showed that the more spark strength you have, the more power output there is. I'd like to say something about pressure also. This right here is um, a graph of compression versus the voltage requirement to cause a spark to happen inside the engine. A spark can happen easily outside of the engine when you're testing it and then you put it inside the engine and you have a high compression head, it may not spark because the higher the pressure, uh, that, that pressure fights against the spark happening. The higher the pressure, the more voltage you need to, to for that electricity to spark the gap. So this is saying at 10 times the atmospheric pressure, which is 147 uh, PSI, which is probably about uh, seven, seven and a half to one compression ratio, you need 9,000 kilovolts at the spark plug. So with a high compression head, you definitely need a, a good CDI with a, a motorcycle high voltage coil to increase the spark voltage. Um, unfortunately, when you when you increase when you increase the um, the compression, it puts more force uh, outward force of the rings onto the cylinder. And these engines come with very lightly plated, very very poorly plated chrome on the inside of the cylinder. And and they did that without the expectation that people would hop the engines up, increase the compression. Um, the the normal setup on these engines is only about 90 psi cranking pressure. And as you go up higher and higher in pressure, you put more and more stress on that cylinder plating. It's more likely to uh, to come off. This is a graph showing uh, the the percent power increase for the compression increase, which is for increase of one. Uh, compression ratio let's say from from six to seven you only get a two to three percent increase in power so my recommendation for people with a groovy engine is is don't increase the the pressure very much maybe a little bit not too much because reliability is just as important as as power so I think that about does it for now, um, one thing I'd like to add is usually the, the smaller the engine, the higher this hump right here has to be, the more advanced it has to be. Uh, there's a common question that I haven't answered yet, and that is why the need for the timing retard as the RPM goes up? That's because at low RPM, there's not that much turbulence that the, the fuel air mixture has on its way to the, the combustion chamber. And so when it, when it lights up, there's, there's larger droplets of gas mixed with the air. And so it takes a longer for that to burn. So you need more advance. As you get into the higher RPM, the the gas droplets become smaller and smaller as a result of the higher turbulence, as a result of the higher speed at which the, the mixture moves through the engine, moves through the carb, moves through the ports. So uh, at higher RPM, the, the, the fuel mixture is more like a vapor than, than uh, a mist. And so when it lights up, it, 
it uh, it combusts a lot faster and it's all about maintaining the peak the peak uh, pressure between 10 and 15 degrees after top dead center like these two right here would be about ideal and you might wonder why not why not after where there's more there's more leverage on the uh, the, the crank with the angle of the uh, conrod that's because you get farther away from TDC you lose you lose pressure so just from experimentation they found out that that, that having the peak pressure between 10 and 15 degrees uh, after TDC is the ideal target that they're shooting for and they they look at that a typical motorcycle manufacturer will look at that when they decide on the timing for the ignition um, and and the reason for the reason for um, a CDI with adjustable timing is that this is with the expectation that that uh, people are going to modify their engine they're going to put a better carburetor on it maybe they're going to put a reed valve on it they're going to increase the compression they're going to put a better spark plug on it maybe even put motorcycle piston and rings on it so the the my performance CDI comes with a setting that's that's pretty decent for uh, a standard engine but then uh, as you start modifying it you'll want to to play with the different switch settings to see what gives you the uh, the best top speed because when the timing isn't right at the higher RPM it, it's fighting against the engine instead of with the engine and it slows you down okay so I think that about wraps it up if you have any questions let me know thanks for watching